Well, Hans Arnold Pant is a leading expert on education research in Germany. He'd like to see a transformation of the school system, but says it has to come down to the schools or from the schools themselves. Why, first of all, can't Germany get the system right? Oh, that is a difficult question to answer, actually, because it, it's a kind of a question of a tradition that we have a federal state with 16 education ministries so that the alignment between all these different actors is very difficult. Why, why doesn't Germany leave it up to the German government then? Why does it leave it up to the states? This is a constitutional question, actually. So in the German constitution, this is uh, put down that the lender, the federal states, are responsible for all education um, matters. Mm -hmm. What needs to change then? The constitution? The constitution, that is, uh, I, I won't go that far. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. It's more a question how we change the actual classroom situations, the quality of teacher education, the quality of teaching in schools. So you might know from the research from Australia, actually, from John Hattie, if what counts is the teacher personality and the teacher professionality. You've also said that the director, the school director, is all important. The school director is the actor in the whole system that uh, has to align what's coming from outside the school and what's going on inside schools. That means in the classrooms. So the modern school leader is someone who has to be instructional, that he has or she has the classroom in mind and also be distributive in his way of leading and guiding his uh, colleagues. It sounds more like a, a typical CEO. Yes, actually, part of the work of a school leader is a CEO work, but the payment isn't sometimes in Germany. Um, should Germany be doing more to shake up the system? Uh, definitely, yes. It should be more uh, innovative in the way that it gives more opportunities and room for those schools who actually do completely different things than the usual schools like to do and to foster and to give resources to these kinds of pilot projects. Resources mean, means money. Money, time, and also um, a positive evaluation of the job of teachers uh, in itself. OK, back to you in a moment, Hans. First of all, uh, we'd like to go to a vocational school that is getting it right, the Elisabeth Selbertschule in the city of Hamelin. It was given top marks as Germany's 2017 School of the Year, and we wanted to know it's recipe for success. You're starting in two minutes. Get the meatballs ready. Sauce and meatballs. The kitchen classroom. Practice sessions with a former chef. The students here have a secondary school education. And this is where they experience the practical side of their future profession. Are the potato croquettes getting some color? Not really enough yet, but the guests will arrive any minute. The future cooks have a lot left to do tonight. They also have concrete plans for the future. I want to take over the family business. I'd like to work in a hotel. I've always wanted to. If you have a desire to learn, you can learn it all here. But first, they have to get the food on the table. Students, teachers, even the director all eat at the school canteen. It provides a daily opportunity to practice, and not just balancing plates. It's also about interacting with guests. Can I get you some water or one of our coffee specialties? Almost 2,000 students from more than 30 countries are learning a profession here. The Elisabeth Zelbert School in the German town of Hameln is one of the best in the country. It received a prestigious prize this year. One reason for its success? systematic quality tests. We look at the numbers in terms of who graduated, how happy they were with their experience, how satisfied the teachers are, and with these results we've collected, we can see which projects and goals we want to have. We implement those plans, and then we evaluate them over a couple of years to see if we achieved the goals or not. If the plans have had the desired effect, they go into the lineup. To become part of the lineup means to be taken up in the school's system, like independent work. The students are given specific tasks and deadlines. But where in the school building they perform them, and whether alone or in a group, is up to them. The teachers are mentors and counselors. There are grades and reports, of course. 
but for teachers as well as students. Just as the teachers evaluate us, we evaluate them, for example in terms of how they structure the lessons, and you get the chance to offer suggestions, like I noticed how often she says um and maybe made her aware of it. Basically it's the same thing teachers do when they judge our presentations. The teachers say they're grateful for the feedback and that it actually makes their work easier. If I have a problem with a class because, for example, I come too late for a lesson or the grading system is unclear or it's not clear what the lesson is about, then there's a problem with the relationship. Then you can try to teach them all day long, but it won't work. They won't absorb anything. A focused learning environment and practical exercises are key, especially when it comes to professions that demand a lot of interaction. Specialist knowledge is just one aspect of the training. Equally important is putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Back to the gastronomy students. It's the end of the day, feedback time. On a scale of 1 to 10, how do they rate their own performance? I'd give myself a 9 because I did what I was supposed to do and helped out a lot. I'd give myself 7 points because I was a little too loud. But aside from that, I did ask if anyone needed help and so on. Time to clean the kitchen and have a laugh at the end of the day. <laughs> The school is perfect. It's certainly a lot of fun here. Just the way a school should be. Then enjoy your evening. So apart from having fun, what, what can we learn from that example? So what we can learn is that many vocational schools in Germany have now entered a line where they perfectly combine elements of practice and of theory in learning for their pupils. Do you see this elsewhere in the world? Okay, we see that in a lot of countries, actually. So the vocational system is thought to be very good in Germany compared to other countries. But we see that in the general school system, also in the Southeast Asian countries, a lot more than we do see that here in Germany. Well, what about China? You've also been there. Shanghai, for example? Yeah, Shanghai is very interesting. It's very efficient in terms of what students learn. The achievement is very high, but at the same time, it's very scary to me to see how it works on a very, very tight schedule, very tight way of teaching. But what's scary about it? The, the class sizes? The class sizes are on average like 45 to 50 students in a class, and that only works embedded in a culture where discipline is one of the most valued things. OK, what about when it comes to spending? What, should Germany be spending a lot more on education? Um, I would say definitely yes. It's not the panacea for everything mm. in, this, in the quality aspects, but it's more talking about how important education is for a country like Germany in a, compared to what actually is spent on that. And the topic we'll get to in a moment why aren't there more German women studying something like engineering in a country like Germany? I think that has a lot to do with the self-concept that is kind of implemented during the first school years. So we know that women or uh, 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 girls are better in, uh, in science, but they feel that they were not as good as boys are. So it's more a psychological uh, reason. Hans-Anne Pan, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you for having me.